What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another Pitching Ninja's Filthiest Pitches of the Day. Remember, before we get to those pitches, hit that subscribe button. Join Ninja Nation. Be a part of the biggest and best daily baseball show on YouTube. And now, without further ado, here are my filthiest pitches of the day. I'm going to start with Andrew Abbott, who had 5Ks in four innings, giving up three runs. He got Ks on these fastballs and changeups. But since he only picked up 5Ks, he cost me my parlay. Wah, wah. Abbott faced Shohei Otani, who had two Ks in one and a third innings, and picked up Ks on these dirty splitters. Not only that, but in the one and a third innings that he pitched, he also ended up hitting a home run, reinforcing his status as king of the pitchers who rake club. However, Shohei only pitched one and a third innings because he tore his UCL. They're having it looked at more, but there is a chance he may have Tommy John surgery again. Absolutely terrible news, especially since Shohei is going to be a free agent in a couple of months. And what was really heartbreaking to me is the look on Otani's face before his last pitch. He clearly knew something was wrong and just tried to tough it out. It's heartbreaking to see the look on his face there and comparing it with the look on his face when facing Mike Trout in the final game of the WBC, wearing his trademark killer instinct on his face. We know he's had to leave starts in his past few outings. Not sure if that was a precursor to this or if he's pitching fatigued and maybe put more stress on his arm. Either way, it sucks. Hopefully he doesn't need surgery, but all bets are off. I think I speak for all of Ninja Nation and wish for Shohei to get well soon. Seth Lugo had 4Ks in 6 innings, giving up no runs and had this slider and 3,300 RPM curveball. He faced Sandy Alcantara, who had 3 strikeouts in 6 and 2 thirds innings, giving up 4 runs and had this elevated 99 mile an hour heater and this ridiculous 100.3 mile an hour sinker with 20 inches of run. Look at this thing. That is peak Sandy Alcantara. Michael Kopech had 5Ks in 4 innings, giving up only 1 hit and no runs and had these fastballs and sliders. He faced George Kirby who had 9Ks in 5 and 2 thirds innings, giving up 3 runs. He got Ks on his fastballs, sliders, and splitters. That splitter has turned into a real weapon. Here's an overlay of Kirby's fastball and slider. You can see how those pitches kind of look the same coming in and that slider just jumps out of the way as you're ready to swing. Dean Kramer had five strikeouts and six scoreless innings and had this sinker as well as these cutters and picked up a sword. He battled Kevin Gosman who had eight Ks in six innings, giving up two runs and had these fastballs and splitters and picked up several strikeouts on fastballs looking that were actually caused by a splitter. Hitters thought it was a splitter coming in and took it because they thought it was going to dive out of the zone but they were fastballs. And here's an overlay of Gosman's fastball and splitter, and you can see why hitters would get confused because he repeats his mechanics really well. And that fastball keeps his plane while that splitter dives to the dirt. Clayton Kershaw picked up four Ks in two innings, giving up one run in a game that was suspended by rain. He had these wicked sliders. Luis Severino had two strikeouts in six and two thirds innings, giving up no runs and only one hit. A much better outing for Seve, and he had this slider. He faced Mackenzie Gore, who went four innings, giving up six runs, two of them earned, and had four strikeouts. And the pitch that stood out to me was this watch your lips fastball. That gets on you real quick. Aaron Savali had another really solid outing with nine strikeouts and five innings, giving up three runs, and had this fastball and picked up a sword, as well as these curveballs and sliders. He faced Austin Gomber, who had four strikeouts and six innings, giving up three runs, and had this slider and curveball. Corbin Burns had five strikeouts in six innings, but gave up six runs. He did get Ks on his cutters, including this elevated cutter and this paintish cutter. I'm not sure if the six runs were due to him pitching poorly or just the ball was really jumping out of that field yesterday. A combination of heat and that open roof. Burns battled Kenta Maeda, who had six strikeouts in five innings, giving up three runs, and had these fastballs, splitters, and sliders. And his splitter continues to be a real weapon. Lion Richardson, a great name, had three Ks in four and a third innings, giving up three runs and had this fastball and changeup. He faced Reed Detmers, who had three Ks in five innings, giving up four runs and had this slider. Alex Cobb had four Ks in five innings, giving up two runs and had these splitters. Those were nasty. And he faced Michael Lorenzen, who had four strikeouts in five and two thirds innings and had this changeup. Zach Thompson had five strikeouts in five innings, giving up two runs and had this fastball and cutter. He faced Luis Ortiz, who had five Ks in three and a third innings, but gave up five runs and had this fastball for a backwards K. 
Jamison Tyone had six Ks in five and two-thirds innings, giving up four runs and had these fastballs, sweepers, and curveball, and took a no-hitter into the sixth inning. He faced Tarek Skubal, who had seven Ks in six innings, giving up four runs and had this 98-mile-an-hour fastball as well as this changeup for his sword. Chris Sale had nine Ks in five innings, giving up four runs. Despite giving up four runs, I thought he looked really good and had these fastballs and wicked sliders. He faced Jose Urquidy, who only had one K in four and two-thirds innings, giving up three runs and got his K on this changeup. Jose Quintana had five Ks in five and a third innings, giving up five runs and had this changeup. And he faced yesterday's co-filthiest starting pitcher of the day, Charlie F. and Morton. Morton had 11 strikeouts and seven scoreless innings, giving up only two hits. Just absolutely prime Charlie Morton. He dominated with his fastballs, cutters, and changeups, and especially his knuckle curve, which was up to 3,341 RPMs. He now has a string of 18 scoreless innings, and at 39 years old is showing no signs of slowing down. This was his 26th double-digit strikeout game at 33 years old or older, and that ties him with Bob Gibson for 10th on the all-time list for double-digit strikeout games at 33 or over. The other pitchers in front of him are Randy Johnson, Nolan Ryan, Roger Clemens, Max Scherzer, Kurt Schilling, Steve Carlton, Justin Verlander, Dazzy Vance, and Gaylord Perry. That is a bunch of Hall of Famers. Before we get to my other co-filthiest starting pitcher, I wanted to touch on a couple of things in the Braves broadcast last night. One, in the opening, this really confused me. I know Chipper was a switch hitter, but I had no idea what he was doing with his right hand here, with Tom Glavin, until I realized that was actually Glavin's hand. It took me a little bit. And then during the broadcast, they did a flashback to this John Smoltz hit by pitch, which is absolutely hilarious. I love Chipper giving him crap on this. My six-year-old would have taken one. Oh, here, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> and I decided to pair John Smoltz up with Roger Dorn from Major League. Their hit-by-pitch mechanics are identical. My other co-filthiest starting pitcher, and maybe the filthiest starting pitcher I saw yesterday, actually, even despite Morton's outing, was Cole Reagans. The Royals got Reagans in the Raldis Chapman trade, and holy crap, he was absolutely dominant. He had 11 strikeouts and six scoreless innings, giving up only two hits, but I'm not even sure that does a fair description of his stuff. He blew hitters away with his fastball over and over again and hit 100 miles an hour on his 99th pitch of the game. Just a blazing fastball, and he topped out at 101 miles an hour on this pitch that was a ball. But he was more than just his fastball. Look at these sliders. Absolutely vicious. And he even threw in some nasty change-ups. Cole Reagans looks like baseball's newest ace. Here's an overlay of Reagans' 99-mile-an-hour fastball and 88-mile-an-hour slider. And look at that movement on that slider. It starts out looking a little like that fastball, but then takes a vicious turn. Great stuff from Cole Reagans, and here's a look at his pitch breakdown. And you can see he averaged 97.9 miles an hour on his fastball this game. If for some reason he's available in any fantasy league, Pick him up right now. Now on to my filthiest relievers. Tristan Beck had these curveballs and sweepers. Ian Hamilton had these sliders. Luke Weaver picked up 5Ks on his cutter, fastballs, and changeup. Garrett Whitlock had this ridiculous sliding catch. Proving pitchers are indeed athletes. Ryan Presley had this slider and fastball. Josh Winkowski had these wicked cutters. Shintaro Fujinami caved the side with his fastballs and cutter. Adbert Alzali had this slider and got absolutely fired up. Nick Pavetta had this fastball and curveball and got absolutely fired up. Pete Fairbanks had these heaters. Andres Munoz had this slider and 99 and 100 mile an hour fastballs. Devin Williams had these airbenders that you can't even bunt. I mean, how do you expect someone to hit an airbender with a swing when you can't even bunt it? Josh Hader had these overpowering fastballs and slider. And my filthiest reliever of the day yesterday was Abner Uribe. 
Look at this stuff from Uribe. His fastball was up to 103.3 miles an hour, which is the fastest pitch ever thrown by a brewer in the StatCast era. And he also had these six sliders, and the combo of Devin Williams and Abner Uribe, man, that's going to leave a mark. Just disgusting stuff from Uribe. And now, my Pitching Ninja moment of zen. It's two alien players marveling at how alien each of them are. Ellie De La Cruz touches Shohei Otani to make sure he's real. And Shohei is giving De La Cruz crap about how he can just flip a pitch in the outfield and ends up being a triple. It's good to see they're amazed at each other's talents because they're basically all of us. What is up, everybody? My picks of the day today are three-leg parlay. I'm going to start with Gavin Williams for 5Ks or more, then take Ken Waldachuk for 5Ks or more, and top it off with Pablo Lopez for 7Ks or more. What would your picks of the day be? 